Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome you all uh, to the next lecture on inorganic chemistry of life, principles and perspectives. What have we done in the recent uh, classes? In the recent classes we have uh, looked at the aspects relevant to biology of those of the alkali and alkali earth elements that is sodium potassium, calcium and magnesium. Now we will uh, transit into the transition metal biological chemistry. So, therefore, let us first look at the periodic table uh, which is relevant to the biological systems and uh, you know these are the ones where you have a catalytic activities particularly we have looked at sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium. The next comes is the transition metal series the titanium till uh, zinc. Uh, though the titanium uh, is sort of as a micro uh, nutrient element uh, is understood, but there is no enzyme yet been identified. Therefore, we will not take up this uh, case of the titanium. We will look at vanadium and chromium is also not involved in any enzyme. So, we will be leaving out then manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. So, we will go in this uh, particular order of the transition metal series to look at the enzymes. I would be spending a lot of time in iron enzymes because we have both the heme based and non heme based. Then we will spend a lot of time on copper and zinc as well, maybe some extent to molybdenum. In other cases we will be spending uh, only a limited number of uh, examples of each of these. Okay, so, let us start with, uh, uh, with the biological inorganic chemistry of vanadium. Vanadium as you know as an element as a chemical element can show a variety of uh, oxidation states. Anybody has a guess what kind of oxidation states? Yeah, think a moment. It can show from plus 5 to minus 1. Okay. So, it can show a large number of uh, oxidation states, but all of these oxidation states are not uh, well favored. Some of them are more frequently found than the others. And in the biological system also we should always keep in mind the kind of oxidation states that are favored are most common oxidation states. And if you look at the most common oxidation states in the, bio, uh, in the viridium are the plus 5, plus 4 and plus 3. We will see the reasons why plus 2 and all are not so common just in a while. Okay. So, before we go to that let, let us look at uh, this particular slide uh, where some enzymes are shown and the corresponding oxidation state haloperoxidase and uh, these are some information which you can read any time like the source system the function. The function is it halogenates the organic substrates and the oxidation state in this is the plus 5. Okay. Uh, and the next one you see that it is the uh, nitrogenase. In the nitrogenase uh, you have nitrogen fixation and the main oxidation state in this is plus 3. Then the AT pages etcetera it uh, store and there is something called amavadin uh, which is uh, a storing kind of a protein not so much details are known as a plus 4 and there is vanadobin and biological cells it can be plus 5, plus 4 in a few cases even plus 3. A uh, lot of uh, therapeutic compounds are also plus 5 and plus 4 and some of their activity is in the insulin based activity. So, what do we understand out of this particular uh, slide or table is that the viridium is involved in the biological systems in a, of course limited number of enzymes and the main oxidation states are plus 5, plus 4 and to some extent plus 3. Okay. Now, it is uh, good to know uh, the, the nature of the variety of species. The nature of the variety of species 
a kind of a uh, oligomers that is found are dependent on the concentration of the viridium and as well as the pH. Most of the times these uh, viridium species are generally found in their plus oxi 5 oxidation state as vanadates. Okay. So, this vanadates like phosphates, like silicates, molybdates, you have vanadates also. So, the vanadates are uh, mono, di, tri, tetra up to about uh, deca kind of things are reasonably known. The, so, concentration of the higher vanadates are generally low. So, if you go for the higher pH, the, the higher size vanadates are generally little bit more favored. So, the higher the concentration of the vanadate, the higher the sizes of the vanadates are preferred. How do we study? These vanadates are all plus 5 based vanadates. So, therefore, the study is suitable by 51 V NMR because a plus 5 viridium is what? What is the D configuration? D configuration is 0, D 0. There are no electrons in the D system. What is the D configuration of viridium in plus 4 oxidation state? It is plus 1 because plus 5 uh, oxidation state is 0, therefore plus 4 oxidation sh state should be 1. There is 1 electron in D, therefore it is a nice system for EPO studies. And 0 electrons in D plus 5 is very good for NMR studies. Okay. And what I mentioned to you about vanadates, how are these formed? Uh, oligo uh, vanadates or polyoxo vanadates, I mentioned their aggregation or their vanadate formation, I would take back the word aggregation, but I would say their vanadate uh, uh, formations. So, aggregated vanadate formations or joint of vanadate formations are dependent on not only on the viridium concentration in the medium in its viridium plus 5 oxidation state, but also on the pH. Suppose you take uh, a pH uh, as acidic as 3.5. So, uh, the entire thing will be protonated that is H3VO4 just like H3PO4 phosphoric acid. So, H3PO4 and then you slowly increase the uh, pH to somewhere neutral or a little bit more than neutral and you start increasing the thing it will become mono negative. Then you make it beyond uh, uh, neutral it will become di negative you go to pH like 12 or above then it will become tri negative because there are only 3 OHs it can only lose 3 protons. So, therefore, at very highly acidic below 3.5 around 2 to 3 it will be all 3 protons are intact above 3.54 one of the proton is lost. So, mono anionic when it is beyond 7 to 8 then 2 protons are lost there is a di anionic where it is beyond 12, 13 pH all the 3 protons are lost. So, it is VO4 3 minus. So, you have a species of uh, this type as a function of pH as a function of uh, pH. So, you have H3 PO4 then H2 PO4 minus H PO4 2 minus and PO4 3 minus not P in each of this you take it as V it is a viridium. Okay. So, so it is a viridium. So, therefore, H3 VO4, H2 VO4 minus H VO4 2 minus VO4 3 minus. It is very similar to the phosphate that is how I just got into the phosphate part of it. So, but we are in the viridate. As you go uh, like 2 to 3 pH uh, up to about uh, up to around 3 pH, around uh, 7.5 to 8 pH and uh, the pH beyond 8 greater than 8 and then greater than 12. Okay? So, you can see the uh, slide that we have on this. Now, at these concentrations because you are forming the negatively charged uh, species, so therefore, they can combine. They can combine by the elimination of the water. So, if the two such things are combined as you can see here, so you can get uh, the H 2 V 2 O 7. So, one oxygen is less that means one water is gone and then uh, you have uh, further 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 4 oxygens are less 
so like that the three oxygens. So, you have a, a H 2 V 2 uh, O 7 and then you have V 3 combination then V 4 uh, then uh, uh, the, the V 4 is shown as 1, 2, 3 and 4 okay? and uh, this is for V 5 and for V 10. Okay? And these are joined together the individual vanadate units are joined together through oxo bridge by the elimination of the water. Okay? So, it is basically by two of the uh, uh, you know VOH groups coming closer it is like this you have a with V one with OH V with another uh, species. So, of which you leave minus H 2 O. So, you get V O V and that is how the uh, links are formed therefore, uh, the, uh, the poly oxo are formed because of that. So, you can see that these are all dependent on the concentration and the pH as you can see their p different pKa values are there. Now, I talk to you about uh, in the varidates mostly these are all veridium 5 and the veridium 5 is D0 system and veridium 5 which is D0 system can be studied by 51 B and more. Now, here is a very interesting curious plot here. So, have a look at this. This is a veridium and a more plot what you have here is a veridium surrounded by different kinds of ligands. Okay. So, if I take this case that means, there are two oxo kind of ligands, two sulfur kind of ligands. This does not mean uh, two O's and two S two sulfurs. It is two oxo ligands, two sulfur ligands. Take here there are three oxo ligands, one sulfur ligand. If you take this one, one oxo ligand, three uh, nitrogen kind of ligands. So, this is what we have. So, therefore, you have uh, vanadium which is uh, surrounded by some all oxygen, some oxygen, some nitrogen, some oxygen, some sulfur, some nitrogen, some sulfur, some oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur. So, that means what? You are changing the coordination sphere. You are changing the uh, ligand nature from oxygen to nitrogen to sulfur. And we know why we are talking about because I already explained in this particular course several lectures ago hot soft acid base concept we explained to you. Okay. So, therefore, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur follows that kind of a thing. Second thing is their electronegativities. Okay. In this case the what you have on the x axis is a uh, is uh, is the chemical shift of not proton it is very deep 51 and more. And on the y axis you have a, this something called sigma uh, n a chi. So, chi is electronegativity of uh, the atom that is attached to the viridium and sigma is summation, summation of all the atoms as so attached to the uh, viridium center uh, by uh, the uh, coordination number C n coordination number. So, the coordination number here is uh, 4, here is 4, here is 4, etc. Here it is 6, here is uh, it's 6. It's so, things of that kind. So, you have different kinds of coordination number. So, this is normalized with respect to coordination number, taking the summation of the electronegativities of the surrounding ligating centers to the viridium. It is very interesting as you can see. Leaving this one aside, you see that there is a fairly linear kind of a correlation we can draw to this. So, fairly linear correlation you can draw. So, you see on this end uh, you have more of a oxo based ligands and if you come here more oxygen is less nitrogen is more and uh, oxygen is less sulfur is more and nitrogen and sulfur. So, it is absolutely going by the electronegativity kind of a principle. So, the greater the electronegativity of all the uh, surrounding atoms, the more negative is the viridium uh, chemical shift. The lesser electronegativity around the uh, viridium, the more positive is the, uh, the uh, uh, chemical shift of viridium. And another thing that you need to notice is that you have a chemical shifts going from something like minus 7, 800 
to plus 7 800. So, it is a huge range of the chemical shifts. So, this means what are we conveying in terms of the biological viridium chemistry? Biological viridium chemistry if I have a viridium 5 in some enzyme in some protein if I measure its viridium 51 and more and try to use this plot I can get roughly what is the surrounding atoms? What is the surrounding coordination sphere? Whether they are all oxygens, oxygens of nitrogens, oxygen nitrogens, uh, nitrogen with sulfur, that kind of a coordination, primary coordination details can be obtained. Primary coordination details can be obtained. That is why we are studying this plot. So, this plot has a relevance to the biological uh, viridium chemistry if the viridium is in viridium 5. Now, having looked at that uh, the viridium plus 5 oxidation state is 0, plus 4 oxidation state is D1, plus 3 oxidation state is D2, etc., etc., let us look at their redox potentials. So, how easily one can reduce, how easily one can oxidize, how difficult one to reduce, how difficult one to oxidize. So, these are the things that we need to understand. So, if you take H 2 V O 4 minus H 2 V O 4 minus which is viridium is obviously 5 just now I talked to you about this then you add one electron to this. When you add one electron to this what will happen viridium 5 will become viridium 4. So, this is viridium 4 V O 2 plus this also has a name called veridyl. So, this is generally referred as the species of veridyl in nature. So, V O 2 plus is also shown as V O and this is called Veradyl. So, this is uh, Vanadium 4 and this is D 1 system. So, this is obviously EPR active. So, one can study the EPR spectroscopy etcetera. Now, Coming to this electrochemical potentials of these, so viridium 5 reduced to viridium 4 and the rest of the oxygen is going into the water has a very high positive potential, okay, that is 1.31. VO2 plus, this is again a viridium 5. So, it is a viridium 5 species, if you add electron, you will get VO2 plus. In this particular uh, situation, uh, this is much, this is a little, somewhat little lower, but it is good amount of positive about 1 volt and there is 1.3 volt that difference is because you are doing from a uh, vanadine which is an anionic species and here you are doing from vivo 2 plus which is a cationic species uh, that is ok. Now, you take this one and further add one electron ok. So, you are taking viridium 4 and then take an electron you will become viridium 3 and this potential redox potential is only plus 0.3. And you take viridium 3 plus plus electron is minus, and uh, so that means as you go from 5 to 4 is quite easy because more uh, positive potential. If you put into the formula uh, delta G is minus N F E naught, and the positive value of uh, E naught will become this minus. So, therefore, there is a great minus that is feasible 5 to 4 is. Uh, quite V 5 plus to V 4 plus is more favored and V 4 plus to V 3 plus is uh, somewhat less favored because the potential is plus 0.3. So, this is plus 1 plus 0.3 etcetera. So, therefore, viridium 4 to uh, viridium 5 to 4 is very easy in the biological systems also and 4 to 3 is not impossible, but with some difficult you can make, but going to viridium 2 from 3 is a negative potential and that means it is strongly reducing it will get easily oxidized. That is probably the reason why biological uh, species did not prefer to have viridium 2 plus because viridium 2 plus is a strong reducing agent and its reactivity is also very high. Therefore, the viridium biological system is very happy with for plus 5, plus 4 and plus 3. Now, come to the other uh, redox couples, the oxygen uh, which I am going to explain when the oxygen is properties etcetera, etcetera, but still we can see right now the oxygen O2, there are two bonds are there that means 4 electrons. So, you can add 4 electrons to this 
and therefore reduced into the O2 minus kind of thing that will be 2 protons. So, water 2 of such. So, this is almost equal to reducing oxygen to water. So, the viridium 5 to 4. Okay. And if you see the viridium 3 to 2 is as good as the NAD plus reducing the NAD plus to NADH. So, NAD plus to NADH so minus point is as, as much as that and or 2 H plus plus 2 electron per uh, hydrogen. So, therefore, uh, the viridium 3 plus 2 plus electron is as much as the uh, NAD plus reduction or proton reduction kind of a thing. So, from this slide what are we our conclusions? Our conclusions are that the uh, it is rather easy to uh, reduce the viridium 5 plus to viridium 3 4 plus and somewhat difficult, but not impossible from 4 plus to 3 plus, but 3 plus to 2 plus is going to be extremely difficult and the whatever the 2 plus species that is product is going to be highly reactive and strongly reducing agent. Probably that is the reason why it has not preferred the biological systems. Now, let us look at the these species being present in the biological systems. These species are being present as an example we see that the veridale species uh, is being uh, found uh, to bind to the transferrin human serum transferrin. And veridium veridil is veridium 4 plus and I said veridium 4 plus is D1 and I said this is a EPR active. Therefore, one can study this by EPR. In fact, if you take a varidate and incubate with the with the protein over a period of time, you would get the varid vivo 2 plus which is bound to which is varidyl species bound to the protein 2. So, now here we have uh, uh, examples shown over there this is for the human serum transferrin. So, human serum transferrin later on I am going to explain when I come to the iron story. This is a, uh, uh, the iron transferrin protein. It has two lobes, one is called the N terminal lobe, one is called the C terminal lobe and at both the regions you have the iron uh, clusters. Now, this veridyl will bind at both of these clusters, at both of these centers. So, the N terminal center and C terminal center. And you know I explained to you earlier in the EPR you will get the high, super hyperfine coupling based on the for vanadium uh, the I is 7 over 2. So, how many vanadiums are there in one vanadyl? Only 1. So, 2 n I plus 1. So, 2 into 1 into uh, 7 over 2 plus 1 that is uh, uh, 8 lines. So, what you expect is there are two veridials, but both the veridials are not in the same place, they are in two different regions and because this protein transferrin has got. So, transferrin uh, I will show I will be showing later on. So, I will say there is one uh, this lobe and there is another lobe this is let us say C terminal lobe and this is a N terminal lobe. So, it binds at both of these. So, one VO2 plus is bound here another VO2 plus is bound here, but they are not communicating they are very far away. So, uh, far away. So, therefore, there is no interaction between them. So, individually you will find you can see all these things are 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, uh, 9 uh, lines. I mean this is coming from the uh, different source. So, these are the actual lines coming from the hyperfine splitting lines for these. So, therefore, you can explain all of them very well. Okay. So, the nine lines coming these are uh, perpendicular kind of a, a situation and each of these if you see with close by uh, you have uh, uh, a splitting of each of this uh, peak into uh, two, there is one is coming from the C terminal and then is coming from the N terminal kind of thing. So, that is the that is why one can study these ones too. Uh, here uh, we have shown uh, for a different uh, case because this kind of a venadyl species is found 
uh, in uh, biological systems, even in uh, samples of the uh, man animal samples or mice samples, the liver, spleen, kidney, tissue, etc., uh, kidney, all these tissues, and they can be studied. So, if you study at the uh, room temperature, you find not so very nice uh, spectrum, but if you go to the lower temperature, you will find the spectrum to be very nice and very well, uh, very well resolved kind of thing. Okay. So, so therefore, one can study this uh, presence of the viridium 4 plus uh, species in the biological systems by using the EPO uh, spectroscopy. Okay, uh, let us look at some a few other cases where the viridium is being ac accumulated. In fact, there is some sea small size animals, sea squirrels, tunicates when where viridium is accumulated and this viridium accumulation is found in their body. So, sea squirrels body is uh, 80 percent of his body uh, is by the viridium or viridium based uh, uh, compounds. So, what happens in these things? So, what happens in these things is these tunicates have got some chromophore called tunichrome okay? and this tunichrome uh, can undergo redox process. As a result of that, it can bring a redox in the viridium 5. So, therefore, tunichrome reduced going to oxidized will convert the oxidized viridium to reduced viridium. So, oxidized viridium is viridium 5, reduced viridium is viridium 4 and further this is uh, this uh, uh, forms viridium 3. So, you can have some part of the viridium 5, some of the viridium 4, some of the viridium 3, all of these are found in this. And in fact, for the evidence for viridium uh, of these species have been worked out by small molecular systems as well. Okay. So, this is for the viridium, viridium 4 compound, this is for the viridium 3 compound, these are from synthetic analogs. So, salin uh, is a salin is this kind of a molecule that synthetic analogs you can in fact make 4 and 3 and show this. So, that means in the biological system whatever the validator is being taken up from the uh, let us say sea water because these are sea tunicates. Uh, the viridium 5 is not sitting in the 5, it will go into 4 and 3 and the viridochrome is somewhat having a structure of this kind. So, what is this one? You have a catechol kind of a groups and you know that the catechol kind of a groups will undergo very nicely, very easily redox. So, uh, reduced form is catechol or phenol or OH, oxidized form is uh, quinone or semi quinone catoquinone and these are the things. So, oxidized form and reduced forms can be formed. So, therefore, the viridium present in these uh, C animals is in the form of viridium 4 and 3 though the entry is viridium 5. They are not entered as viridium 4 that should be noted kindly note that these are the entry point is viridium 5 not the viridium 4. In some of the uh, species there is a low molecular weight uh, compound containing reducing sugar. Uh, which is called veridobin. In fact, the veridobin also do very similar kind of thing. In this whole figure what I need is uh, your attention is th this is if you take a central line here only the above portion. You do not need to so much worry about the portion below. So, veridium 5 uh, and uh, uh, is captured by the veridobin and that will convert into veridium 4 and then this can go even to 3 and so veridium 5, veridium 4 to veridium 3 and uh, you have other anions to stabilize some of these. So, therefore, uh, in, in another system, the previous one was the C squirt and this is in some other cells. So, even in cells, the viridium 5 that is being taken in cannot be ideally sitting as viridium 5, it will go into viridium 4 and viridium 3. And this goes very well with what we studied with the redox potential. 5 to 4 absolutely very easy, 4 to 3 is somewhat ok, not as easy, but However, with certain reducing agent this is possible and that is what we are basically finding. Okay, with the veridate, uh, before we go into veridium based enzyme, let us look at some effect of veridate. At this stage, I would like to recall your attention to the, uh, the sodium potassium ATP pump. Just in the previous class, I have covered that. You know what I mentioned there? You have a E1 conformation 
of the protein ATPase, the sodium binds and then this triggers along with the magnesium 2 plus the phosphorylation. So, the phosphorylation will be with the phosphate group and at that stage protein conformation changes sodium ions are gone and this whole thing happens in this particular half of the cycle. And at that stage of the sodiums are lost, the potassiums gain the affinity to bind to the sites in the ATPase and uh, at this the magnesium uh, activates and then dephosphorylates. So, when it dephosphorylate at that moment, if you have a vanadate in the presence, the dephosphorylated protein is replaced by the vanadate and the second part of the cycle is incomplete. So, thus uh, presence of uh, phos vanadate will act as a inhibitor for the ATPase activity. So, ATPase is good, this is the half cycle goes very happily. In the second half cycle there is a uh, phosphate uh, dephosphorylation. During that period if vanadate is present, the vanadium will uh, or vanadate will bind. Once the vanadate binds, then it will not revert back to the uh, normal state because the vanadate binds at least 30 fold stronger and also vanadate, uh, vanadate binds very much stronger to this particular system and uh, it is irreversible. So, vanadate binding is absolutely irreversible. So, therefore, this cannot uh, be functioning. So, therefore, if in a ATP cycle, if they, you add some vanadate uh, and vanadate and phosphate are very similar in terms of shape, charge, size, etc., very close by and then viridium vanadate can inhibit the enzyme. So, this is an inhibition of the enzyme, I am not talking about the enzyme activity. Okay. So, the kinds of species that are present are shown over here, the magnesium uh, bound ATP and uh, then vanadate bound. So, with the phosphate and when the phosphate is gone, vanadate is present. So, the species looks very similar, but the vanadate species is much more stronger by 30 fold and it is irreversible. Okay. So, in this class what we have studied, we have studied the vanadium uh, can exhibit plus 5, plus 4 and plus 3 in the biological systems, uh, plus 5 to plus 4 is quite easy, plus 4 to plus 3 is not impossible though not easy, but it is possible. So, therefore, in the biological systems uh, the vanadium has been found in the form of plus 5, plus 4 and plus 3 and vanadate acts like a inhibitor uh, to the, uh, the ATP cycle in the second half that is the potassium part of the uh, part of the cycle that is in the this part of the half of the cycle. So, we will continue with the enzyme uh, based on the vanadium which is called vanadium haloperoxidase in the next class. Thank you very much.